Welcome to Talking Tuesday. I am your host, Fancy Quant, and today we are going to talk about the perspective of being a manager, and just more specifically, me being a manager. So I've done this over the years, past firms. Um, you know, you do the, the typical growth progression, or at least you should. Uh, if you don't, you miss out on a lot of, I think, perspectives as you grow up, but you start typically as an individual contributor. So you're the person that's actually doing the work. So you start your job, uh, you're just an employee just getting stuff assigned to you and you just do what they tell you to do. And hopefully if you work somewhere good, you have a really good learning curve and you learn a lot in the first few years. And then as you probably get into about five years, you're probably doing project management or team management. Um, and from a quant perspective, this is not what most people think. So the way that I view this, the way I think it should be done, the way it's been done at most of the firms I'm at, uh, you're an individual contributor. And then as you become like a manager, essentially, you don't really have direct reports in this kind of gray area here. You're like a vice president-ish. I don't know what you want to call it in other terms, but um, you're going to be in a position where essentially you're running teams on projects. So originally you were working for someone on projects and just getting stuff done. Uh, now you have like a managing director who just gives you projects and you just need to complete them. And you're assigned typically one or two junior employees to help you with a lot of analytical work and a lot of the model development work here. So I think it's a good spot to be in in the sense that you actually have to still do the work. You don't get to just tell people what to do, which I think a lot of people think like, oh, as soon as I'm gonna be a manager, I'm just gonna tell people what to do. And that's not what's happening. You actually still have to do the work and you have to manage, which doing both of them is extremely challenging, but that's really what the job entails. Uh, people in those positions, again, should have that backing of like five years of actual hands-on individual contributor work doing that exact task. So if you come from a different area and you're coming in, you probably should do it for a while before you get going in that kind of middle ground of doing management management. And then above that, you have more or less like team lead. So I was the director. So let me just lay out banking real quick for those of you that don't know. Uh, banking is typically analyst associate, uh, junior vice president, vice president, senior vice president, and you can argue perhaps once you get into like senior vice presidents where they fit. Um, but then typically you have like directors and like managing directors. So I was an associate director, which was this weird gray area at the one firm. I was managing employees on projects. Uh, they would just offload entire things on me. And then I would get a few resources, which is employees. And uh, you request specific ones that are better than others. And you just manage projects and get the work done. Um, on that front. Then when I started managing actual teams on the director level, um, that was a little bit challenging, a little bit different now because now you're more in the planning mastermind phases of trying to get all the pieces in the right place, uh, make sure everybody's working, make sure things are getting done. And then you start worrying about more or less like employee health. So even now I'm running an entire department trying to build a quant department um, at a fintech firm here. And it's similar to this in the sense that I'm still having to mastermind everything together. But now there is a lot more in the sense that I'm having to interact with all of the other departments outside of me. So I was doing this somewhat before when I was a director and the fact that I would work with like the data quality and data governance team. I worked a lot with the model development team. Um, we would meet with business units that would need models validated or developed. And so I was spending quite a bit of time uh, on that side, kind of putting all the pieces together, writing really boring, tedious things like, you know, risk management policies, risk uh, procedures, uh, frameworks for validations, uh, work plans, uh, documentation that you have to follow for validation procedures and all that, uh, employee training. And so it starts to get a little more dicey in the sense that now when you had your true love of doing math and stats, it starts to slip away from you and you can still kind of do it when you have time. Uh, you typically can throw a project error in there. In real quants, we still want to do it. So we don't just like offload everything and say like, good luck. Uh, I'm just going to manage everything and I'm going to tell everyone what to do. Uh, you actually still like to do it somewhat. And it's part of the emotional battle of quants. Uh, I agree with Steve Jobs in the sense that those that are the best managers are those who don't want to be managers. Like for me, I didn't get a master, an MBA or like a business degree. And I'm like, I'm going to be a man. I'm going to manager here and I'm going to tell people what to do. 
and I think I'm really good at planning. No, the, the best managers are those that actually know how to do the work because then you can start figuring out how much time it actually takes to do it and you can better allocate the work. Now, one of the big struggles here with allocating work which a lot of employees I don't think see, is that every employee often thinks they can do everything. Unfortunately, that's not really how it is. It's typically everybody has strengths. So I'd have like managing directors ask you to do, what projects have you done? What types of, you know, have you ever done a mortgage uh, default model before? Have you ever done like a, and they're like going through these questions. And I always thought like, it's a model, I can build anything. But when you get into the management levels, you realize a lot of times you don't have time to hands-on manage each and every employee and train them. And so to do that, uh, you need to have those middle layers like the you know vice presidents and all that and associate directors and those sorts of things doing that. But you need to be able to match up the skill levels with the teams because it makes the projects go a lot smoother. You end up with a lot more quality work. And so it's easier just to give teams that are qualified to do the work, the work. And then also you have to balance the fact that employees want to grow and do something different and new and try to figure out, you know, how do you set those sorts of teams up as well? So maybe I have an associate director or a, you know, vice president who's stellar, uh, is a rock star at, I don't know, let's say C car modeling. And I'm going to take this individual and I'm going to put someone new that's coming from a background of like market risk and I'm going to throw them underneath of them. And they're going to do time series applications within like a regulatory stress testing framework. And so it gives them an opportunity to, lo to learn and grow and put all that together. So these are the things you start to struggle with as you get more to a manager level is how do you look at the work and review the work uh, without being in the weeds every single day? And that is an extremely challenging aspect if you don't have a really, really good qualified team around you. Now, my new job in the fintech world, as everyone has been wanting me to talk more about it, uh, we're a super, super small team. Um, there's only three of us, myself included, at the time of this recording. And so we are doing all of the model development. Uh, we'll eventually be putting a model validation, model risk management team into that structure. Uh, we will also be doing uh, like economic and scenario forecasting and some other things, again, that kind of fall on that model development side. And really anything that falls under risk at this time is kind of falling under myself. So again, having a small team though, it is extremely challenging in that sense that you have to kind of be able to do uh, more multiple roles here. We don't have a lot of layers. And I'm currently trying to bring in people in that middle layer here where they can actually train and do hands-on training with the employees. Uh, but doing that plan, I think that's the struggle part as a manager is how do you find people to fit in the right roles uh, when employees don't fit the correct roles that they want to be in? Uh, how do you train them and get them up to that speed? Um, I know that's why a lot of <laughs> businesses require like masters and PhDs over undergrads. Even at a masters and PhD level, there is a massive amount of training that goes into employees. Uh, if they're not employing you, they're just throwing work at you and you're just doing work and you have no feedback if it's good or bad, you're not in a good spot. It's just, it's a big investment and it's a huge challenge. Um, and for me, the worst part of any management job is all like the planning pieces of it. And unfortunately, I don't trust other people doing that for me because I need to be able to see how the pieces are moving and who's going where and the quality of the work and being able to line these things out. But the goal, as I kind of mentioned in another episode, maybe before or after this one, I don't remember. Uh, the goal, though, is to get that quant pipeline built out where it's like your employees are coming in to do quant work and they're super excited to build models and validate models and they just love data and modeling and that is what they're going to do. And as a manager, part of your job is how do you strip away all the nonsensical layers and pieces around them, as I've kind of mentioned in there, like the meetings and the, the other departments that are coming and saying, hey, I know you're really good at this. Could you help me with this other side project? And then hopefully they can say no. And if not, as a manager, I'm having to step in and say, you know, oh, you can't use my employees to do this, that and the other. They're kind of busy on these other projects. And so keeping them in line is a challenging piece. And once you can get that dialed in, though, it's pure bliss. But getting to that point is going to be a real challenge here um, in the current role, just because it's a new firm and a new startup and a new department. Uh, this is one of those things where I really miss the banking side. I miss having these massive teams. And even in my uh, one of my previous jobs, uh, we had a validation team of 30 people as validation. So the actual validators and the governance people all in one team. Uh, this was a large, massive bank. 
It was a uh, US division of a global bank. And we had essentially on my team, four people that only did an entire business section, which was like 84 models, I believe. I recall off the top of my head. So there's 84 models in this business and there's only four validators. And we were mean and lean and we were just getting things done left and right. And of course, everyone was complaining we were always behind. But then when you looked at other teams, they'd have like six or eight or 10 people. And they had like 20 to 30 models between those teams. So again, I want to get back to that lean, mean team. I want to be able to get people in these pipelines. Right? As a manager, things start moving a lot faster. You start getting a lot more success. You start getting a lot more happiness out of this as the employees. As a manager, when people start hitting their stride, like back in 2000 and... Oh, man probably the fall and spring of 2014, I was just churning. Like, oh man, it was beautiful. It was the dream days. It was when I was just working constantly. I had minimal projects lined up. I was working for a few directors in economics, uh, implementation and model development all at the same time. Again, not doing validation because that'd be a violation of the SR117, um, but it was beautiful. And then I went into another bank, worked there a few years, took me a few years to get my feet under me. And then I had a good managing director. And again, the strides were coming and it was just churning out the work, doing the models faster and better than everybody else. And our team is, again, the cohesion between the team members, like we were just one unit. Uh, at least two of us on the team were just in lockstep in everything that was coming through the door, big projects, super important projects, small projects, anything coming through was just getting churned out really fast. And so as a manager, that's what you're hoping to get to. But how do you get there is a lot harder than, you know, just hire right people or just train them for a month. It takes a lot of effort on the cultural side of getting everyone to fit together correctly. Um, and not everyone's going to get along, which is always a challenge. And then assigning the work correctly and the progress and making sure everybody's happy with what they're getting. And then again, putting all this together so that it's a nice functional process here. And my absolute favorite part here of being a manager, uh, basically everywhere I've worked, any project I've worked on, even at the bottom, is always education and training. I absolutely love it. Um, so I currently have a new hire that came straight out of the grad program and we are building models together and I'm acting like that VP layer where it's like they have a project, uh, I assign them the task, they need to go just build this model. Uh, but I've of course broken it down up into the processes of how I go through the documentation and my workflow. And I say, okay, work on this piece first. And then they start working on that and they're running with it and they're excited and they're getting a lot of stuff done. And then, you know, they have all these questions or they give me feedback on this is what I did, this is what's coming out of it. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm getting all excited in my head. I mean, they don't see this probably, but I'm like all jazzed up. And if, if I get on the whiteboard, like, you know, you're doing something right. Uh, <laughs> but we have meetings that get togethers and I'm in the office and I get on the whiteboard and I'm writing out, like explaining, you know, populations and samples and distributions and why this is coming into here and how this data plays into this. And then you have these metrics that come off of this and they don't teach you this at school. And I'm getting really excited about the teaching part and I just absolutely love it. So this has been like the biggest win and reward here at the FinTech so far is the fact that I haven't just resorted to bringing in a bunch of experienced hires. Um, I've brought in so far one junior hire. I would like to bring in more. Um, again, I, I have a very, very specific individual that I want and need uh, to come in at the senior level and help me do the training and help me get the processes done so I can spend more time probably on the not so fun parts. Uh, but again, that training piece is just, that's where I strive. Like, I love it. I love being in the teaching position and I love it a lot more than doing YouTube in the sense that YouTube, I can explain things sometimes, but people can't ask questions which is why online learning sucks. And then also the other piece is like, I don't have a real problem I can give you on the internet. Like I can't say here's this awesome data and it's for a real company and we're building this model. And by the way, like you see how this thing isn't working correctly and you see how this doesn't work and you're like, you know, you're frustrated as the developer and I'm showing you cool things like this is why these exist and this is how you fix problems. I would love to be able to do those on the internet, but the problem is you can't because all those actual real world problems on real data sets, one, take a lot of time. So again, new employees a lot of times think they're going to build things really quickly or those that transfer from other departments or, you know, other banks, institutions that aren't used to doing this very well. 
you should be on a problem for months because it takes at least a few months to really get into the nitty gritty details and the weeds on this and doing these teaching parts. But it has been a blast, guys. This is probably the most rewarding piece of the entire process is really twofold. One, if you can get a team up and you can get it running and processing and everything clicking along and you have results coming out the door. I am nowhere near that right now. Uh, and the other piece is just the intermediary piece of just being able to teach and build people's careers and help them kind of get going, which is what I just I love doing. It's why I like to go to university so much and talk to students and do presentations. Uh, I just love teaching. It's my absolute favorite thing. Uh, one, because I just nerd out and get real detailed about things. And then I find out people just don't know things, which I just assume you know. And then it just gets me all excited to explain and teach it. Uh, it's also great too to see these in the long run. So I've had some students I've worked with, again, not professionally, um, but those on the YouTube channel, and they've had just a lot of questions and it's like detailed and it's very to the point and they're intellectual questions and they're smart. And then I see these individuals and they graduate and they leave and they go into the industry and then they're starting to get these really good jobs and they're learning more and more and more. And then they write me a letter, an email or the message on LinkedIn. And like, Dimitri, I just wanted to thank you for helping me with, you know, my career and stuff. I'm here, I'm doing this and they explain everything that's going on. And they thank me for my time for helping train them and teach them. That is the most rewarding piece of everything out of the, the podcast, the YouTube channel. It's really seeing like the impact of it, right? They're doing all the work. Just like when I have employees working for me, they're doing all the work. But it's, it's the teaching and the guidance piece that's just really like, it just makes me excited. It's the piece that drives me, guys. It's not really coming in and I get, this is where my big frustration comes in with those of you that, oh, I want to be a trader. Uh, all you care about is money and I just don't care. Like people can talk about finances and money and it's like, yeah, I can explain this. And yes, I have a finance degree. So I've gone through all the traditional finance finance routes. Um, I've taken financial engineering courses and quantitative finance and statistics. And but the math and stats, like the model building and like the data and gleaning the, the cool details and information that you just don't learn in school or they're not easy things to figure out, like teaching that to someone else so that they can apply it and then seeing them succeed that's that's like the gold for me. So being a manager, guys, it's a lot more challenging than you think. I had an old colleague that used to say, you know, managers just look at charts and read charts and anybody can do that. Uh, but individual contributors, they're the ones that are really slaving away. Uh, you don't see behind the scenes. So all the work that goes into employee development, uh, dealing with other departments, uh, planning, training, and everything else that kind of stacks into that. Like I wish like my best days are days when I can just shut down sometimes and I I turn off my Slack and I turn off my email and people can't get a hold of me and they're probably wondering why. Uh, I'm actually coding because I want to build models and there's a piece of me that loves doing that still. But as you get up into the management layers, uh, doing the hiring process takes a bunch of effort. If you have to fire anybody, it is a nightmare. It is not a fun process to do. And then planning and getting all the pieces all put together, again, is just a boring, tedious process of doing all that. And then when you have employees that are mad about not being on the right projects, it's just a nightmare. So Again, the training and teaching piece, that's where the reward comes from. Uh, again, being able to still touch projects, I still believe that every quant, no matter your level, uh, should be still programming and modeling to some respect. Again, even if you became like a chief risk officer, uh, I would expect you would have you know, some insights, some time in with the developers or the validators really digging into the problems and the issues and making sure it's done correctly. Uh, but again, you're the higher up you go, you just don't have time to do all the nitty gritty details, which seem tedious at the time, but they are the most fun part of being a quant. So anyways, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And as always, until next time.